Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. So my son and I today are going to be doing some leaf blowing and leaf raking. I've got my awesome chemo electric leaf blower so I'm going to be blowing um, as much as I can into this area and he's going to be doing some raking and I will be doing some raking as well. We have a ton of leaves. After we break them up into a pile we'll also be getting out our leaf machine which sucks them up and chops them into smaller pieces and then we can use them for mulch or for uh, composting anything that we need to help improve the garden we do not get rid of them because they are a free resource of wonderful organic material to add back into the landscape all right well let's get started So I do just want to take a second to explain a little bit about the way that we do our fall cleanup. I will say that I am not fastidious and the reason for that is that I don't want to try to clean up things that can help um, the biology of the ground. So if I cleaned up every single one of these leaves it wouldn't be great. My husband's going to come out here and mow after we do this so it's going to chop up any of the leaves that are left and just help to fertilize the grass. So if you don't have a ton of leaves and all you want to do is just mow over them several times to chop them up into small pieces, that's great. Um, the only way you don't want to use the leaves is if they're still completely full leaves because they will smother the ground and possibly, you know, create disease or even um, smother out some of your smaller plants that might be struggling or need more light or air. So just something to keep in mind. One of the things that we love about fall is the smell of the leaves and the sounds of the leaves and we like to make it fun. So this is one of our traditions is after we rake up all the leaves into a giant pile, we run and jump into them as if it is the most wonderful thing in the world. So we're going to get these really piled up high and then we'll show you how we celebrate fall. For safety reasons, also, it's important to make sure you take all the sticks out. Okay? But large sticks. So, yes, large sticks, any large sticks. You don't want to get poked when you're running and jumping into your leaf pile. It's also good if your leaf pile is nice and dry. 
You can do it when it's wet, but just prepare, you'll be a little bit damp. Are you ready? Yeah. Get set. Go. <laughs> that was a good one. Also be prepared to end up with leaves in your hair. Where is he at? There's a gopher in the hole. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Leaf attack. <laughs> swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> Woo! Hello. Hello. It's a bushel of leaves right there. Shall I suck you up? No. You sure? I don't want to be sucked in that thing. I don't want to be sucked into pieces. Well, I hope you enjoy, enjoyed today's video. We're going to be putting some of this leaf mold all around. We've got all of the leaves bagged up in this. It automatically bags them and it's great. So I got lots of requests about what we do to close our fountain every year. And we've had a brief stint of warm weather, but now we're headed towards more freezes and cold. We have already actually drained the fountain, taken the water out. And what we did was utilize the wet dry vac that we have and just sucked all of the water out along with any algae or any debris that's in there just to kind of clean it out and make it look nice. And so next up, what we're going to do today is we're going to take some supports that my husband has created that are very specific, just made out of some two by fours and some other small materials we had around. Um, they're very specific to our fountain just to help create a little bit of structure around the fountain so that we can then put the cover over the top and not have to worry about the snow weighting down on it and building up over time and creating issues. So that's what we've done and we'll show you a little bit about what those supports look like and we'll show you how we install them. Okay, the easiest thing to do right here is for me to explain a little bit about um, what my husband is doing while he actually puts it onto the fountain. So we'll talk you through some of the steps. So this, as I said, is the um, piece of wood and supports that he has created. Um, we do have the pump still in the fountain uh, because the way that it is wired, we can't actually take it out during the winter. So that's another reason why it's so important for us to get the water out. Otherwise, we would have to take the entire top off and the bowl to get it out and that thing weighs enough so that it takes at least three very good strong men to lift it off. So we keep it in there and this is how we protect it. So when we got the fountain we unwrapped it. It was in a very big box and was protected by all of these old coffee sacks 
and we're simply reusing these to be able to protect it and you could use anything that you have some old sheets any material that will just be soft to um, go between the fountain and any supports that you might have you don't necessarily have to have supports we're just showing you what we do because it was a big investment for us to buy this fountain and we want to make sure that it's protected and we can enjoy it for years to come so these were used to store both coffee as well as cocoa beans and all my husband's doing right now is putting them on the edge of the fountain again just to make sure that things do not get injured or scratched there is a nice uh, finish on the fountain as well that we want to protect and so this will help make sure that the wood doesn't impact the fountain itself Don't step on the stones. So you can see it's just hanging the V part um, that is cut into it over the top bowl of the fountain and then the bottom of the two by four rests on the burlap sacks. The fountain didn't come with anything for winter protection. I don't think any of them actually do. Uh, so you have to come up with your own plan based on what your winters are like. And if you have freezing weather, you definitely want to protect them. This is a cement fountain. I get a lot of questions about where I got this. I got this actually off of Wayfair. I believe the total investment cost in our enjoyment and tranquility was about $1,500. So very expensive if you ask me. But if we get 10 years out of it and we think about the fact that we use just one, the artisan quality of this, uh, the beauty of it, and the enjoyment and tranquility that we get out of it truly is an investment in our enjoyment. So next, my husband is just adding a couple additional braces here with the drill and uh, he screws those in so that the supports stay on throughout the winter despite any rain, snow, or ice that may add weight to the cover that's on there. Last year, we used a tarp and it was not necessarily a fountain cover it wasn't designed for that so it was kind of an odd shape and had lots of bulk to it i did actually buy a fountain cover which i will show you i believe i got it off of amazon and so i'm hopeful that that um, actually fits this contraption a little bit better and doesn't require quite as many bungee cords to hold it together Okay, so he gets the last couple of braces on there. I'm gonna open up the fountain cover and see what it looks like. And again, if you don't have someone to put together an amazing contraption like this, um, or you don't feel like you have any carpentry skills, you probably could just use some rags and some old two by fours to help provide some structure and support to your fountain cover. Also, if you don't get a lot of snow, but you get freezing temperatures, just use a fountain cover and you don't need to go to these lengths. But this is an excellent way to do it in an area where you get a lot of snow cover and you want to protect your investment. So this should be shaped a little bit more like a fountain. And in addition to that, it has a strap that you can tighten around the base. So we're going to give this one a shot and see how it works for us. One last thing that we do with the very top of the fountain, because it's a small piece of concrete and it has a hole in the top of it, even though the cover is waterproof, we also like to protect that. So we just use an empty plant pot 
and put it over the top and again that helps to pr uh, provide some structure and some weight distribution across it. You never know some winters you get like zero snow and another winter you might get three or four feet of snow and it's crazy. always little something that you have to adjust when you try something new and even though uh, this cover may seem really nice and look better than the other one we got to take these two ends off here because they're just jutting out into it other bird bath fountain. Uh, I think I got rid our problem though now is that I think I got rid of the other one. Okay the bad news is I failed to measure the tarp that goes over the fountain that I ordered so it's too small. The good news is I didn't throw away the old tarp it's just dirty from last year and the new tarp spiders and the new tarp can be used for our new fountain slash bird bath that's in the side yard to protect it over the winter and i will just order a bigger fountain cover for next year and make sure that i measure so what they say measure twice cut once so measure twice cover your fountain once bungee cord um, we're gonna put some bungee cords around the bottom just to hold it tight so none of the wind gets it but it should be fantastic for the rest of the winter so that's it for for this one and we'll go cover the other fountain with the cover that I ordered okay so we're just gonna put this over the bird bath now and we use a pot to distribute the weight on this one as well and I'm just gonna take the top over the gonna need to cover this and so I'm really glad that it didn't fit the other fountain so I could use it on this bird bag. Alright everybody well I hope you enjoyed today's video learned a little bit about fountain maintenance there's really not that much to it it's a little bit of a struggle at the end of the season to kind of get things to fit together and get it shored up just right but it really doesn't take that long so I enjoy fountains a lot the sound of water in a garden is really peaceful and I think if you add one to your garden you will be very happy thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time bye